everyone, I'm Lori from Lori's Country Cottage. This is a fusible applique project that I am going to show you how to do. So stay tuned if you've never done this before or if you need a couple of tips. So we have a kit for the um, pillow, including the back with the zipper. This week I will show you the applique and some of the tips for that. Next week I will show how to insert the zipper on the back, creating a great accent and hiding the zipper under a flap. The original pattern came from Amy Chappelle, from ThermoWeb. ThermoWeb is the fusible web that we use. So I've adapted a little bit for us. And so let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is trace your applique pieces on the paper side of the fusible web. The fusible web has a, a rougher side, which is the glue and a smooth paper side. So you want to trace all of your pieces. You can use a light table like the cutter pillar if you have that, or you can use a window with the light behind. You want to cut around all of your pieces, leaving at least a quarter of an inch of the paper with the fusible beyond your pieces, uh, your fusible pieces, before you adhere them to your fabric. When you adhere them to your fabric, it takes very little time to fuse it. A medium iron from four to six seconds is enough to hold. You don't want to do it much longer. Whether, whether the um, fusible webs have changed, but at one time, I thought the more you steamed it, the more you heated it, the better it stuck. And that was not the case because I think I cooked my glue. So you want to use a medium iron, no steam, four to six seconds. You can do a little bit of a, um, a circular motion and adhere all your pieces to the fabric, to the back side of the fabric. Then you want to cut out your pieces along the line, right along the line. Why you want the paper to extend beyond your pieces is that that way you end up getting a fuse, the fusible web or the glue right to the edges of your pieces. Um, when you, um, I did my trees actually almost entirely and my base and trunks almost entirely with my rotary cutter. The circle I did with my Karen K. Buckley serrated scissors. Now, if you have serrated scissors, um, you may know why you want to use serrated. If not, um, I'll tell you about serrated scissors. They have teeth on them, on one side, on the top of the top blade, has teeth on it, the bottom blade does not. Um, that is so that you can get them sharpened. They sharpen only the bottom blade. The serration holds your fabric. So especially when you're doing a circle and cutting around that, it holds your fabric so that it doesn't run away on you as you're cutting. So now we've got all of our pieces with the fusible on the back. Now a little trick to get the paper off, you don't want to pick it from the edge because you will get the edges ratty by, by doing that. So take one of your pins and slash the back of the paper with a pin. What that creates is a little cut in the paper then you can bend it on that cut and the paper will cut peel off like a sticker. Very, very easy. 
Now we want to cut our borders for the pillow. Two and a half by 12 and a half, two strips. Two and a half by 16 and a half, two strips. Set those aside. And we want to cut our pillow front, the center. That is a 12 and a half inch square. So what you want to do is use the lines on your ruler with the lines on your fabric to make sure that you are cutting it straight with the print. Sometimes it's printed a little bit off. So yeah, straight as you want to be on the straight of grain may not be 100% straight on your fabric. Now, sometimes when um, the fabric has been uh, rolled and folded, it is yanked quite hard with the machine that does the rolling. And so sometimes it's a little bit out of whack, a little bit of steam on there to just bring it back. And or if you see that one of your corners just isn't matching up nicely with your lines, you can pull opposite corners across the bias to um, stretch it to make it fit nicely. So you want to use the lines on there to um, match for your cutting. When you cut something or when you square something up, you always want to cut the corner. So you, the top right hand corner if you're right handed. So I'm going to go up the right edge and across the top from the right edge to the left. Spin it around and then repeat with the other. That way you don't get a crooked corner or a, a, not a 90 corner when on your top right hand. If you go up one side and then you measure again going the other way, sometimes that's what happens. You end up losing your 100% 90 degree corner there. So you want to add the short borders to either side of your centerpiece. Stitch with a quarter inch seam the two opposite sides. And then you want to press towards the border. So press away from the, um, press your seam away from the center. The reason why quilters will press to one side, they say makes the seam stronger. And yes, it will make the seam stronger because if you think about those threads that are in there, if you spread that seam open, only thing holding your fabric together is those threads, the little um, loop in your thread from your stitching. If you push it all to one side, you've got the thread from your stitching and the thread from your fabric to all hold. So you want to press towards the border, away from the center. Repeat with the 16 and a half inch strips. And now you're ready to layer it with your batting and your backing piece. Now your batting and backing can both be larger than your front piece until after you've quilted it. When I did my quilting, I started on one edge and I one corner and I went diagonally through the lines. If you go diagonally through the line when you get to the opposite edge, you go down along your ditch and go back on the next line. And I followed the lines of the plaid. You can quilt as you want, but that was just an easy way. There was nothing to mark. When you do that back and forth on your grid, it makes your um, quilting with very few starts and stops. Otherwise, you'd be starting, you go diagonally, stop, and have to tie off, and then do the next one. So this way, if you go all the way across, then down, and then all the way back on the next line, you can continue doing that using your ditch to get to the next line. 
Now my sewing machine has stray uh, or has a thread cutter on it and it leaves little about half inch little threads and so I like to use my little Karen K Buckley scissors they've got a very fine point a nice curve in the blade and soft handles that make it easy to use for clipping your threads you want to clip as close as you can and with the curve that those scissors create it clips nice and close to your fabric. So you want to clip away any of the stray threads. Now you can lay your applique pieces over the center of your pillow. I used a ruler along the bottom just to make sure that my base was going on straight. The base goes on, the globe goes on and tucks under the base and then your trees, and you can see that some of the trees tuck under the others, and so does the trunk tuck under the tree. Then you wanna take it to your ironing board and press again, medium iron, no steam, four to six seconds. That's enough to hold your applique in place. Now, when I did mine, I took clear invisible thread on the top and I just used my regular thread that I had in the machine, my, my quilting thread or my, my piecing thread. And I stitched a straight stitch around all of the pieces. You can do a straight stitch or a zigzag around each of the pieces. And you would, if you're gonna zigzag, you wanna zig into the, into the applique and off on the edge, past the edge and you can zigzag it with a narrow zigzag or you can do a straight stitch. The zigzag is a little bit more durable, but on a piece like this that will likely maybe never be washed, I just opted for the straight stitch. Once you've got that all done, you want to square your pillow up to your 16 and a half inches. And then you can set it aside or you can put your back on as you like, or you can watch next week, our how to's will show you how to add the zipper with the contrast flap and create a hidden zipper, which is super easy to install, making for a nice finished pillow. Well, I hope you enjoyed my couple of tips and information on how to make this um, pillow top and next week we'll show you how to finish the back with an enclosed little zipper there to make a nice finished project i'm also going to show you next week how to trim these off so that your pillow fits nice and you don't have little points here on the corners of your pillows. So stay tuned next week for that. And I thank you for watching. I'm Lori from Lori's Country Cottage. Bye for now.